Today we're gonna to be talking about CRMs, why you need a CRM, what CRMs there are, what tools you should use, how to use it. CRM is literally a must-have tool, especially when you're doing lead gen, because there's so much stuff going around. And just for context before we get into it, so you don't go, who is this dude and why is he talking about sales? <clears throat> During the past nine years, I have knocked over 30,000 doors. We had a 15-person sales team. I was the team leader, ran a B2C supplement company. I have been the head of lead generation and head of sales for a few different B2B companies. We have a multi eight figure client who we were doing sales for, booked a lot of calls, I've had a lot of conversations, I've closed a lot of deals, and we have generated millions in revenue. <clears throat> every single time when something has gone right, and every single time like when the sales pros and the sales team and everything has just been efficient and working really well, the big commonality has been, we have had a good CRM, we have used the CRM, we have had a lot of data, and we have been doing a lot of follow-ups. And that's pretty much why you wanna have a CRM for all of those activities. First thing to cover, there's multiple different CRMs. Here on the screen, you're seeing Pipe Drive, and I'm gonna be breaking into Pipe Drive a bit more in a second, but there's also other ones, there's great ones, there's HubSpot. HubSpot is a great one, it's a bit complicated. You don't really need HubSpot if you are running your own agency. I don't personally like it. I have sold an offer through HubSpot, so we were using HubSpot for that company. It was fine, but there was so much unnecessary stuff. There's also like more of the traditional ones like Salesforce. Again, this is for more big enterprises, at least in my experience. I know companies use hundreds of thousands, even millions to build Salesforce CRMs for themselves. There's also other ones that is called Close.io. Close is a really great one. If you're doing a lot of outbound, Close is really, really smooth for that. In my opinion, if you're thinking about what tool you should use, either Pipedrive, if you like simplicity, and if you have a bigger outbound team, use Close. If you're doing most of all inbound, or if you don't have a huge team, use Pipedrive. So the idea of CRM is, first of all, organization. A big mistake that that I see a lot of people making if they don't have a CRM tool is they are trying to just organize their leads in some random Excel sheets and Gmail and notepads and Notion docs and like just some random stuff and it is just inefficient. There is no proven way to just move deals down the pipeline and the cause of that is that they are losing a lot of money in the process. They are really not that efficient in sales. They have a lot of money in the follow-ups. The money is made in the follow-ups and if you are not systematically following up with every single deal and working to move them down the pipeline, you're pretty much always leaving money on the table. So here is a simple pipeline on Pipedrive. So here we have different stages and pretty much all of these different stages, they represent different stages during the sales process. So first stage, let's say we have a prospect. Pretty simple. Second stage, let's say we have a prospect and we send them an email and we can call it contact. After contacted, we get a positive reply. The goal after that is of course the discovery call. After discovery call, we're gonna have a demo call. After demo call, we are gonna maybe have follow-up or negotiation and then we are gonna have a closed deal. So this is pretty much what a fairly simple pipeline would look like. Of course, you can customize it to your own need. You can maybe have less stages. So for example, when I'm doing outbound for myself or for my clients, I always like to start from the positive reply. So if I have 10,000 leads or 5,000 leads or 3,000 leads, I just upload them to the sending tool that I'm using. And then when I get a positive reply, that's when I put them in the CRM. So I'm pretty much not using these tools because usually we are doing so much volume. But let's say that you would have 50 different prospects, you could already start them from here. So you are making sure that everyone gets contacted, etc. So it needs to be customized to your own needs. This is pretty much a fairly simple one. So the first thing, you send an email, you put a lead into an email sending tool, you write the script, you do all of that fancy stuff, and you get a positive reply. They reach out to you, yo, this sounds great. Can you send me more information? So what you do is you put their name here. So let's just use John. John Smith from the organization of marketing growth XYZ and then of course we want to add some kind of an estimated value for the deal so if normally your lifetime value is 10,000 let's add 10,000 here and then you can put their email here and their phone number here and probability of closing them all of that stuff the more information you have on the pipeline the better but this is what we're just gonna roll with now boom you put them here on the positive reply and now you have them in your CRM here you could have a stage between here more information sent but I like to just manage them like this. I don't like too many stages in the sales process because I'm a simple guy, you know, and sales always should be simple. So you have a positive reply here and let's choose for the sake of the example. Let's also imagine that we also had another reply from Mark Mansion and the value of this deal is a bit bigger. It's 15,000 and person is going to be Timothy Smither. That's great. So boom, now we have
have gotten some positive replies on the pipeline. And the great thing that you want to do here, the pretty much the thing that makes it really powerful is you go to each deal and you write notes. So you can write here, John replied on 6th of June saying, it sounds great. Can you send me more information about it, please, before we have a call? Pretty basic reply that you might get from a cold email. I replied with a link to the sales letter and a quick explanation of offer and ROI. Boom. Follow up asking for a call. So you're always keeping note what's happening. So a big mistake that a lot of people make is they don't keep note of their prospects. They forget what you have been talking about. They, you forget to follow up with them. You forget to do all of this cool stuff. So they pretty much you get a positive reply and then you just leave them hanging. It's always great to have some information getting tracked on the prospect. Then the next thing that you do, you have sent them more information. You make an activity. So you remember that you need to reach out to John. And so you just do follow up and ask for a call. Boom. And then you schedule it for two days in advance. So then on Thursday morning, when you open this up, you're going to have a green bubble here. This is going to turn green. So what you just do is you just take all the green ones, every single deal that has a green arrow here, and you just make the activity. You're like, okay, follow up and ask for a call. Let's see what we talked about with John. Boom. You write them an email. You can write it straight up from here. Yo, John, just wanted to reach out and see what you thought about the article that I sent you or the letter that I sent you. Would it be a good time to have a call next Monday, 10 a.m. or 2 p.m.? Question mark. Let me know. Boom. So then when you have done the follow up, you just mark it as a done. And at least with Pipera, what is really neat, it pretty much forces you to book another activity. So if they haven't responded by next Monday, you are going to again get an activity to follow up on LinkedIn with them. So you'll always make sure that you're not forgetting the reply or follow up to a prospect. Super smooth. Finally, John Smith replies to you and they're like, okay, boom, let's have a discovery call. You move them here, the discovery call slot. So you hop in the discovery call, you open up a new note and you just write here. This discovery note. So then as you are in the call, you're just taking really quick bullets. You don't need to do anything fancy here. If you try to format it perfectly during the call, it's just going to be super annoying, but you're just taking notes. So, okay, John, what made you to hop in the call today? Yeah, we are struggling with generating leads. Struggling with leads. Okay, wh wh what do you mean struggling with leads? Are you not getting enough or are you not getting any at all? Or are they bad quality? Yeah, we are not really getting that much because we are just relying on referrals and there's no events or no referrals. We're relying on referrals. Also, events. Okay, John. Interesting. How many leads are you getting right now? Yeah, so we are getting five leads right now a week and we would like to have 20. Okay, go 20 per week. So you're just writing these things down. As you can see, it doesn't have to be perfect. You can go after the call and you can make it smoother, but you don't want to be the guy in the call who is trying to make his grammar perfect because you're just going to end up looking like a geek. The call flow is just not going to be good. So just write things down. Try to pay that. No qualified leads. Also try cold calling no leads from there said targets enterprise martech companies sales paid ads offers or whatever it might be and then after the call you can just go back and boom just make it make sense and then before you hop on a call boom you already have the info save it and you book a call with them so you smash it here make the activity you book the demo call for 15 and it is at 1 p.m and it's gonna be a 45 minute call boom you already have it here again you won't forget it because you're gonna see it on your ramp so then when you're there on the demo call before the demo call happens you just go here like okay Okay, what did we talk about with this dude? See history, discovery notes. Let's see. Okay, yeah, now I remember they were struggling with leads. They had done paid ads, boom, 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 all of this stuff. So you're always gonna be on top of the situation. And of course, your goal is to move them here uh, to the close stage and doing the sales process. So now you're probably looking at this video like, ah, oh, super nice, but that doesn't really seem that dope. But what makes it really great is when you are doing sales at a high level, you might have 300 positive replies here, and you might have 100 calls here or 20 calls here. You might have 10 calls here and you might have 25 in the follow-up negotiation stage and then it doesn't really matter we're in the close stage but you will have a lot of deals here so what you need to do is every single morning when you wake up and you open up your laptop you're like okay i'm gonna start making some money so you go stage by stage this is something that has been really useful for me so first thing in the morning you look at the positive reply stage here and like okay what can i do today to move as many deals as i can from this stage to this stage like this is the only 
discovery goal that you have. Okay, what can I do today to move this person replies to discovery calls? So you can follow up with them again, you can hit them on LinkedIn, you can hit them on email, you can reach out to someone else in the company, you can call them, whatever it might be. And okay, boom, during the day you get one more discovery call book. Then you have your demo calls here or your follow-up negotiations. Okay, what can I do today to move these deals from follow-up stage to a closed stage? And you're following up with them and all that good stuff. So pretty much right now what we have here with the stages, we have a great way of organizing them. We have a way of keeping track of all the conversations had and all the notes from calls, etc. And we also have a really great way of keeping track of all the activities that we need to do. Super simple stuff, but I just feel that I need to cover this because so many people are not using it. Then what you can also do and what makes it really cool is if you have a lot of deals here, what you can do is when you get more data on your sales process, you're going to start learning the actual ratios and the actual probabilities of closing deals. What that pretty much does is let's say you know that, okay, every time when I get a positive reply, there's a 3% chance that I'm closing that. And every time when I book a discovery call, there's a 10% chance that they're going to turn into a deal. And every time when I demo call, there's a 20% chance that I close them. Every time when someone goes into the follow-up and negotiation stage, half of those deals turn into revenue. So then when you have your data, you can pretty much see like, okay, if you have three positive replies and every single deal is worth like 10K or 15K, you have estimated how much they're worth. You can know that, okay, I pretty much have $1,000 generated. Of course, they haven't turned into money yet, but you pretty much know, okay, I have three positive replies and that is worth $1,000 for you. So this is a really easy way to keep track of your goals. And then, okay, right now our pipeline is worth like 35K and we are extremely likely to close 1K from it. We book one discovery call and boom, the number goes up because now 10% of these deals are going to turn into calls and then we book mansion one-on-one for demo call. Okay, boom, again, now we have $4,300. So instead of you trying to go out and get more leads, you can just focus on moving the leads in your pipeline further up the stage. Like, okay, you know that if I'm able to move roofing.com to discovery call stage, you're pretty much going to be making more money. Like, okay, right now I know that I'm going to close $4,300 as my sales cycle goes. Now, like if you want to make more, you just need to get this roofing.com. If you book a call with them, you make more money. And then marketing growth XYZ deal, you hop on a discovery call, book a demo call with them. Boom. Again, we are making more money. And then we get mansion 101 to follow up a negotiation stage. Boom. 10K. Fucking fantastic. And you hop on a call with marketing growth XYZ with John Smith and you close them. Boom. We have made 18.5K. And of course, you need to understand that these are not always gonna be like exact numbers, but they're gonna be really good indicators based on how much data you have. And Pipedrive also has a really good reporting tool or like an insights dashboard that you can use. I'm not gonna open it right now because it has all of our sales data from Agent Velocity, but still you can like just check it and see, okay, our average deal size is this, our average closing rate is this. On average, if you get someone to discovery call, this is how many deals we are gonna get from there, etc, etc, etc. I see so many people just losing money because they are not using a CRM. There's a lot of like really cool things. You can make automations like every time when you move, post your reply to the discovery call stage, it's gonna send them an email about like, this is what's gonna happen. And every time when you move someone here, it's gonna send them a different email and it's gonna add them on LinkedIn and it's gonna do X, Y, Z. It's gonna do all of this cool stuff. So here you can see different automations that you can do with Pipedrive. So you can have all kinds of cool stuff. If you wanna build a lead generation agency, you can just go to your browser or you can go to the link in description. You can just write angelosso.io. You can go here, you can watch this presentation. It's one of the best things that I've ever done. You can do all of that fancy stuff and maybe we can work together because we will help you scale your lead generation agency from zero to $10,000 a month in 90 days. So yeah, I'll see you in the next video.